Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Brooklyn Rails 404th New Social Environment. I'm Anya, an events assistant here at the Rail, and I have the pleasure and the privilege of being your MC today for a conversation between Leonardo Drew and Eleanor Hartney. We're thrilled to have the poet Charles Salodia here, who will read to close today's program. A few quick notes before we get started. We'd like to thank, uh, we'd like to start by thanking the Dermot Company for supporting this month of the new social environment. And um, also that the, as the rail is celebrating its 21st anniversary this October, you can learn more about Dermot Company and the rail's curatorial project at 66 Rockwell through the links that I will um, post in the chat shortly. At the rail, we open all of our events with two important acknowledgements. The first is that here in New York, we are on the Napehoking, the unceded land and waters of the Wappinger, Canarsie, Muncie, and Lenni Lenape people of the Delaware Nation and Shinnecock Indian Nation. The second is an acknowledgement that Black Lives Matter. The heart of both of these acknowledgements is a commitment to the liberation of the oppressed and solidarity for all who struggle for freedom in recognition that when it comes to liberation, our histories never unfold in isolation as said by the great Angela Davis. In that spirit, I encourage you all to check out the chat for a living document of resources and actions that I will post. And now to introduce today's guest and host. Artist Leonardo Drew is known for creating contemplative abstract sculptural works that play upon a tension between order and chaos. Drew's works have been shown internationally and are included in numerous public collections. Recent solo museum exhibitions include shows at the Mississippi Museum of Art, North Carolina Museum of Art, the Young Museum and Fine Arts Museum of San Francisco, California. Drew was born in 1961 in Tallahassee, Florida and grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut. He currently lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. And New York-based art critic Eleanor Hartney is the author of numerous books on contemporary art. Hartney is a contributing editor for Art in America and has written extensively for publications, including Art News, The New Art Examiner, The Washington Post, and The New York Times. Uh, she is author or co-author of several noteworthy books about art, such as Art in Today, and most recently, Doomsday Dream, The Apocalyptic Imagination in Contemporary Art. She is an editor at large for the Brooklyn Rail. Uh, so without further ado, Leonardo and Eleanor, please take it away. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. Um, the um, this talk, conversation we're going to have today is um, it's really in celebration of Leonardo's quite remarkable uh, installation currently at Gallery Le Long. Um, it's an amazing and immersive environment that um, I think very, very well um, exhibits the qualities that have been in described, his work has been described as making chaos legible. And I think that that, that kind of sums up a lot of, of what you see in that show. One of the things that's quite interesting about the exhibition, and we'll be looking at it in a little bit, um, is that it, it really brings together so many of the, um, the themes and the approaches to uh, materials that he has been pursuing throughout his career. Um, and in fact, to the point where he has, he has always, in a way, sort of cannibalized his own work. But in this particular case, whole um, artworks, whole sculptures have become part of a larger installation. So I thought that because it's a kind of culmination, in a way, of, of work that he has been doing for many decades at this point, I first saw his work in 1992, um, that we do a little kind of trip down memory lane to begin. And we'd, we'd go through the work. Um, and talk about kind of how, where he came from. And that I think will help to give us some insight to where he has gotten to today. So uh, let's start um, actually with a piece. Okay, when we look get the, the first slide here, um, which is, I, I think, Leonardo, from what I understand, this work, you know, you you sort of see this in a way as maybe your, yeah, the, the, the seminal or the, the, the piece that Absolutely. kind of really got things going. Could you talk a little bit about it? Well, I mean, it's uh, called number eight. The uh, reason why it's called number eight is because uh, the numbers uh, one to seven actually are embedded in this piece. So uh, it was the first work that I decided to number. Um, uh, and that whole uh, reasoning behind numbering works is just to allow the viewer uh, to have a full on uh, uh, 
you know, they, you know, the, in order to sort of like have these pieces fully realized, I do believe that uh, the viewer is sort of complicit in completing the works. So I'm not necessarily force feeding uh, you to sort of like see, you know, like what I'm realizing. It's more important that you actually have, a, you know, a full on journey within the piece. So they should become mirrors. So in fact, the numbering is about that. Uh, 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 it, it just allows you to sort of find yourself within the work. Now, uh, uh, this being, you know, like, a, a, you know, uh, this work in particular, anyway, it's like, a, I, I won't call it like a, uh, you know, a, a sculpt, sculpted like Jackson Pollock. Uh, Jackson Pollock was like uh, the artist that uh, really sort of like uh, shook me to my foundations, like when I first saw his work and would have been like in 90, I'm saying 1990, I'm sorry, 1976 was the uh, first realization of what fine art was. Because before that, um, DC Comics, Marvel Comics, um, uh, Heavy Metal Magazine, all these guys are after me to sort of work for them as a teenager. Uh, the uh, facility in my uh, facility was such that like um, that these guys were calling. Um, and uh, once I saw Jackson Pollock's work, that was it. You know, it's sort of like, I said, okay, now I need to sort of like, you know, find out what's beyond this prettified surface. So whatever I was doing, uh, what Jackson Pollock was doing, was, it seemed to be something totally alien and different, and but worth the uh, uh, the uh, uh, effort of trying to sort of figure out what fine art was. So, um, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, as I sort of pushed through, this is this is probably the uh, the piece that was really the breakthrough for my abstraction and also getting beyond the prettified surface. And, and, and one of the things that, of course, is quite remarkable about this piece is the kinds of materials. And, and, you know, this is a work which incorporates this, you know, kind of very unexpected and unusual um, and unorthodox art materials. And that is something that's really just been a leitmotif throughout your entire career. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you want to just say a few things about that before we kind of move on I'll, to the next slide. I'll tell you, honestly, like uh, the idea of birth life you know, like a, 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 you know, death and regeneration is probably a, you know, a base thing throughout all the materials that I, you know, I said I uh, work with and um, becoming the weather in order to sort of realize the, uh, uh, the transition of things through time uh, uh, was important that I also align myself with nature and understand that like we're not separate from nature. We're actually, you know, a, a, a part of this whole, you know, like, a, you know, a, a cosmic realization of, 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 you know, how we're sort of like work our way through this life, you know. So, so um, you know, like uh, that is probably pretty much a continuum throughout all of my works. But this, this piece in particular was the introduction of that philosophy. And like uh, the kind of materials that are in it, I mean, there are dead animals in it. <laughs> You know, I didn't I didn't kill any animals, but I did do a lot of like pick up a lot of roadkill in order to sort of realize this piece. And for his time, this was back in 1988. Um, I remember uh, critics writing on a piece and was the question was what, whether or not it was art, you know. And I think that at this moment, I mean, a lot of artists are working with these types of materials, uh, you know, so unconventional. I mean, like uh, as I was then, I think that uh, people have definitely caught up in terms of what materials can be used as as uh, or you know to sort of make art so as i'm sort of like making my way through i'm still asking questions and still sort of like um trying to sort of push the envelope for like what uh, can be included into uh the dialogue in terms of like what is you know art what we consider art and yeah and i think that's really important to, again to sort of think about what was going on in the art world at the time that this work appeared maybe we can get the next slide up Mm -hmm. um, now, this is the first work of yours that I saw, which was at Thread Waxing Space, which was a, yeah, mm -hmm. kind of an amazing um, exhibition space. It had a kind of very raw quality. It was huge. And your work, you know, it, it would have dwarfed many artists' works, but it didn't dwarf your work. Um, and I just remember being kind of bowled over by it. And, and part of it was, you know, this uh, amazing use of materials. Um, you know, here, this is, is um, the, I think the piece we're looking at now are, are these are cotton and uh, uh, sort of rusted cotton, right? This canvas, I mean, it's interesting in that because as a, as a black person, I think that people were like continue to sort of lean towards that material. Uh, uh, it's, it's, yeah, I, I did use cotton in this uh, exhibition, though this piece is made up of canvas or uh, muslin bags uh, that I sold, I sold together and then rusted. Um, uh, and I, I would say that the uh, whole show probably echoed maybe, uh, I would say, uh, a journey of my people, uh, you know, throughout this, uh, 
you know, like uh, the Americas. And I think that like uh, uh, when it comes to, you know, like a, a you know, like a, a, a show that sort of encapsulate, encapsulates, you know, like uh, uh, our journey, it, 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 this was the exhibition. But once I did it, I didn't necessarily continue to sort of return to, you know, working with that material. It just seemed too, uh, for me anyway, at that time, too easy to sort of work that material. And even to this day, people will still talk about cotton uh, and relate it to me and uh, uh, on the history of the material. I, I think that's fine. But I'm, I'm telling you that like once I touched it here, it was like one of the rare, you know, it, it was one of the materials I kind of felt, you know, I did it. I worked it. Now it's time to move on, you know. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think you're right. People, there was a tendency to, to be maybe a bit reductive in the interpretation mm -hmm. of the work and to see it in, in terms of, you know, uh, the, the history of, of, you know, cotton, were, were, you know, slaves working the field, et, et cetera. Um, and one of the things that, uh, you know, I think has been sort of amazing about following your career is the way that you, yeah, you take on new materials and you, you give them multiple meanings. So in this particular case, you know, there were multiple meanings that would, you know, the cotton is also, and, and here the canvas, you know, soft versus hard, order versus chaos. I mean, you can see here this, you know, that there's what's interesting too, and, and I think has been continuous throughout the work is this kind of underlying grid. I mean, here we have these boxes, you know, that there, so there's a kind of post minimal, you know, kind of ordering structure here that is, um, you know, that, that you, you've continued to use, but that has been so um, kind of flexible for you that you've been able to bend it and push it in so many different ways. Well, I'll tell you honestly, Eleanor, uh, uh, what happened with uh, uh, the uh, grid and my uh, introduction to the grid was that I was creating in uh, watching my apartment in Washington Heights, and uh, I had maybe like two rooms that I could sort of like create things. And uh, a friend came out over and he saw the work that I was making. And he said, "How are you going to get it out of here?" You know. So, <laughs> so that that once I realized that you know, like you have to make things. So that you can sort of not only, uh, you know, like a, a, a hang them without a, like an army of people, but you also need to sort of like be able to get them out of your apartment. And that's where the grid really came into play. Because, you know, like uh, being able to break something down and then be able to put it back together uh, uh, became an important uh, realization of like how you sort of make things uh, structurally sound and also where they make sense with, you know, throughout the, uh, I guess, uh, the uh, history of, uh, of art. It's, it, it's that question is a continuum. It's like, oh, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like, how do I actually create something that's not necessarily going to either fall apart or you can, you know, uh, manipulate and maneuver it into different situations. And my materials continue to sort of, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, be that, you know, uh, malleable, flexible, you know. Um, uh, yeah. But, you know, you, at, once, you, once you sort of realize that, then it's pretty easy to sort of like push on uh, into, you know, like uh, uh, realizing the service, but you need to have your structure sound first. Right, right. No, and and so that's what, and and then of course a lot of these works, a lot of these um, materials end up showing up in other works as well. So mm -hmm. you know, there's a whole that, that you know kind of recycling. <laughs> you you were you were into recycling like way before. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Nothing is sacred. Nothing yeah. is sacred in the studio. <laughs> I'll tell you, yeah. it will be always wise if you're a collector, never to leave things around after you purchase them and leave them in the studio. That's not a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> I will take them apart. I have done it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. You're not gonna get that. You're not getting that piece back, you know. Right. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, nothing is sacred. Yeah. Now the next slide, um, we can switch the next one. This is kind of a um, anomaly in your work. This was was actually a backdrop for a performance. And mm -hmm. Bruce Cunningham. Think, is this the only one that you've done like that? Mm, I think so. But it's interesting that uh that that you can live just long enough so that you begin to forget the things that you've done. And so like uh, this piece I have not forgotten because I did it with uh, Merce Cunningham. And uh, he approached me about doing this sort of a collabor collaboration with uh, the musician, with himself doing the phrasing and me actually creating something. You know, and his, interesting that his, um, you know, philosophy on how he, you know, creates is that he allows you, uh, the artist to sort of make whatever. And he's gonna go off and do what it, whatever he does. And then the musician does that also, and all these things come together opening night, believe it or not. So that has been his formula for like, you know, uh, success or failure, you know, he committed to that. And I, I mean, of course, after seeing him go through that, I said, I need to sort of add this very same sort of, uh, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, creative process to like how I make things. And uh, um, I just thought it was, you know, just, you know, uh, 
you know, like it's courageous for one to allow me <laughs> to sort of take on your stage, you know, and you're not knowing exactly what I'm going to be creating, you know. So uh, 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 the end result is what we're looking at, and it's like, wow. um, you know, it's just a lar much larger version of number eight. Uh, no dead animals in this piece, but you know, uh, in the end, it's, it's it did take on the whole stage, and like uh, the dancers sort of had to figure out, you know, once he did his phrasing, it's also his uh, his uh, the uh, the uh, uh, choreography was 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 um, was malleable enough so that he was able to sort of like work around uh, what I created. And now, do parts of this did, did, did these also get recycled? Do you use parts of, of this um, set as well? In no, that piece actually is now owned by the Wexner, I believe. Oh wow! I think they they, they now own his, his his archive. You know, like yeah. uh, uh, so that's where that piece is now. Wow! So I can't get my hands on it. <laughs> okay, well maybe that's good. <laughs> All right, next, next let's take a look at the next image. Um, so yeah, now here we're, we're seeing here, especially kind of how the grid, you know, this and, and this sort of, again, this sort of order and, and disorder, you know, and how you kind of working these things together, um, that coming up now to 94. So this is, I guess, what, two years after that first, mm -hmm. um, thread waxing show, mm -hmm. um, how had your work been developing then? Well, you know, uh, traveling became sort of like, I, I mean, without me actually even knowing how I was going to be influenced by moving around uh, the world and taking in information. But when I was in uh, Senegal, uh, uh, Dakar, in, you know, uh, uh, you went to this place, uh, this, the catacombs there called Glory Island. And it was a place where they held like, a, you know, they were just uh, slave chambers, really. And like, um, I didn't realize that I was going to be affected in such a way. But like, I knew that when I got back, you know, like, uh, and started creating, um, I'm never sort of like pointing and saying, this is what the work's going to be about. But some time later, this st work started happening. And, um, and I swear, when I look at it, it feels exactly like those, you know, those catacombs, you know, the claustrophobic sort of like, uh, uh, you know, gathering of this uh, material. And uh, it, it, it's, um, it's a monster. Um, and and it, it should be, you know, but it is, it's sort of like it's this, this uh, monument to that, that, uh, that experience, you know. Wow. Um, it was a shock to the system, but I think that like, uh, 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 you know, like uh, from that point, you know, like uh, moving around and traveling, I mean, it's important to sort of like place the artist anyway to sort of place his body in different situations and locations, uh, just so he can pick up, you know, uh, frequencies, you know. I mean, if you can imagine your body becoming like an antenna, receiving information, uh, right. you place your body in, in places uh, um, and allow it to sort of like, you know, you know, take on the information, you know. Well, what, Without what, what, you actually having to sort of like say, this is exactly what the work is going to be about. Your body's already digested it and it needs to give it, give it back. Right. So if you're a musician, you're, you're a poet, writer, uh, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna write about it. But as an artist, you're going to sort of give it up, you know, physically. Well, I think, and we're going to see that as we go, continue to go through the, the slides that, because you've done extensive travel and we're, we're going to end with a, actually a little kind of travel log of some of the mm. places that you've been. But mm. the, the way, it's interesting the way that you use those experiences. I mean, because you don't use them in sort of a literal way. You don't, mm -hmm. you know, recreate. I mean, here, yes, there's a, a kind of suggestion maybe of the catacombs and yet it's not just that. Mm. Um, you know, there's, I think one of the things that's interesting about your work is that it's very, it's metaphoric, it's elusive but you know it, it it never allows you to kind of you know center and 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 fix on one particular interpretation or you know kind of one particular metaphor um mm -hmm. so yeah in, in this particular so important case, so important that that, yeah. that 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 point you know because i actually and within that i actually can also learn you know uh, your experience is just as important as mine so it's like a, a, a being able to sort of like you know, uh, get your your uh, your take on what you're experiencing. A lot of times, I can be you know influenced by uh, how you're taking in this information. You know, so uh, it could be something I wasn't even thinking about, but it could be something that's you know also like um, um, very powerful and uh, um, and 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 I and I have to sort of address it. You know, right. Well, in a way, what you're doing reacting to these cultures is kind of what the dancers were doing and reacting to your backdrop. Exactly. You know, I mean, that whole improvisational approach to, you know, how do you, how do you use your creativity? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's next, let's take a look at the, the next image. Now, um, I understand you, you've talked about this one in terms of being kind of a self-portrait. Mm 
It's an interesting <laughs> way to think about it. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh my goodness. I mean, there's so many stories that go with this piece in particular. Um, uh, I remember actually, um, it's at the uh, Hirschhorn Museum and I uh, took on this whole wall, it's made up, uh, you know, like uh, on, through my travels, I was just collecting all kinds of materials. And um, uh, I remember uh, the security guard who had to spend so much time in front of this piece, uh, he would wait until, you know, like a, a, a people, you know, enough people sort of gathered in the room and then he would start to tell them what the work was about. And, and, uh, and I just happened to be there <laughs> as he's talking about this piece and it was, it was amazing. Um, uh, he was talking about things that I couldn't and didn't even think of. And I um, had to ask him afterwards. It's like, uh, where'd you get all that information? He said he got it from the artist. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know what? Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Maybe that's yeah, no, no, no. I didn't. You know, I, I, I said, just get out of his way, you know, get out of his way, you know, he's on it, you know, and so, uh, uh, and then this is one of those times when it's like, oh, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, it's time to learn, you know, it's time to pick up, you know, new information, and he was giving it up, and it was, uh, uh, and the back and forth he was having with the, uh, uh, with his audience, so to speak, you know, it was, you know, really, um, you know, evocative, you know, but uh, as far as this piece, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a journey, you know, like, uh, uh you know, like as I, you know, the uh, two years of like collecting materials and, you know, putting my body in different situations and literally like, you know, a uh, 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 gathering and then sort of like puzzle fitting all these things together in this one piece. It's like a, a monster of a thing, but uh, it, it says absolutely something about the things that, or, or laws of attraction. I mean, the things that you're attracted to, because there are a lot of things that just wasn't going to pick up. And, and, and when I say pick up, I don't usually work, you know, almost never with found objects, but this is one time because I needed to sort of like understand what color meant in the work. I said, you're allowed to sort of like grab anything and everything. And so from bones to plastics to you name it, you know, like uh, when I was in Brazil, was collecting all this uh, um, porcelain tiles and things and, and just added it to the piece, you know, and said I could, you know, just, just um, allow it to be, you know. And you know, right. it's, uh, it's a monster. We, we have a close up actually, which, which yeah, let, let's let's get the next slide because I think we have a close up which will kind of illustrate what you're talking about in terms of yeah. the kinds of materials. If we can get the next <laughs> image, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, here, yeah, I mean, just <laughs> I mean, what do we got here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's it's a it looks like it could be a giant computer chip or you know, like a uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, seen from above, you know, like uh. You know, like a, if you're like a, a bomb. Yeah, it's like, a, a, it's like an aerial view of a city. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all in there. I mean, it's all inclusive. So I don't think there's a, there's a they, I don't think anything's left out in this piece. Everything is in there. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, interesting to look at that. It's like, um, boy. <laughs> and what and what has happened to this piece? Is this piece is has this is this piece intact still, or is this one <laughs> is this, now? This, this many, piece actually this has on many it, it, generations. This 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 piece actually has been. Th th there were two other works, uh, massive works um, that were part of this very same show at the Hirshhorn, and they survive now at uh, SF SF MoMA. Uh, there are two pieces that are like fourteen feet by fourteen feet. Uh, but this piece in particular, I mean, I, I meet you like doing that material. That is, you know, that material was a uh, uh, was a gold mine. So I just like uh, I just couldn't wait to get at it. I'm sorry that it, it no longer exists, but the other two, the sister pieces to this, actually do exist. So which is great. I don't yeah. think they're in a slide presentation, but uh, but uh, uh, but yeah. uh, but they're yeah. they're owned now by at least uh, by a museum. So I can't get my hands on it. Well, that's so. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the and the rest of this probably lives on somewhere else. <laughs> oh no, it does. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, now the next so the next image here we're we're jumping up now to um, uh, twenty fourteen. Mm -hmm. uh, can we? Yeah, let's get the next image. I mean, it has a very you know c c you know there's actually this feels has has much more order in it mm -hmm. than the, the piece we were just looking at and. Mm -hmm. It, it feels like there's been a kind of shift in your sensibility here, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and could you talk a little bit about that? I mean, it, it feels more, it, it's, yeah, it's organized. In, in, well, I mean, if you, listen, honey, if you were to, to um, imagine a, a paragraph, uh, a sculpted paragraph or hieroglyphics or, you know, like a, um, a, it's language that's in words within that language that are all coming together to sort of build 
you know, like a, 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 a you know, like a, a, you know, a story. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it, I mean, the, the, uh, the work that's at the, uh, in the gallery now is just another iteration of this very same type of work, which is, you know, like a, a um, it's just made up of, of all these parts, but they all come together to sort of form one piece. And like uh, uh, the, the layout is definitely, uh, uh, you know, uh, gridded as such that it becomes like a, like a readout or a paragraph, you know? So uh, right. these are just- Well, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. th this work makes me think a little bit about Jennifer Bartlett's Rhapsody in the sense of it, it's like a kind of building up, building blocks of vocabulary mm -hmm. in a sense, you know, or, or that right. you, you've, you've dissected your vocabulary and, you, and you've laid it all out, exactly. which is sort of a very different kind of, you know, um, a, a way of dealing with your materials than the, you know, the previous work and, and some mm -hmm. of the- the other works that are coming up um was that helpful for you to kind of i mean it, it, it feels like a process of you know maybe of, of, of parsing of, of of stepping back from your work i mean that's a sense that i get from this is that you know maybe you're you know you're reflecting on you know what you've been doing i, I don't know is, is that is that a well, fair thing is, to say honestly I, I would tell you that this this piece has its beginnings with uh, people who come to the studio and always look for remnants you know uh, things that are falling off some of the big pieces or things that are laying on the floor. And it's like, uh, they would take, you know, I would hand these things over to people as gifts and they would take these things and frame them. And, and then you realize that my goodness, this is not the thing that I, I was walking on, on, you know, on the floor of my studio, but it actually, it's a, it, it's a world within the world. I mean, are microcosms of these, uh, uh, you know, and, and they're intricately, in, intricately work so that they actually are these intense experiences within themselves, you know, so it's like if you broke off one of the, like uh, one yeah. of the larger pieces, you know, like uh, 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 you still get the very same impact. And that was when I learned that you know something, you better do something with this. And this piece is actually an answer to that. Yeah. So it's just all these parts yeah. that I had, you know, like around. I mean, it's well, like you a, know. And, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think yeah. I mean, and, and that points to one thing that I I think is. You know, again, a, a, a sort of a continuum throughout the work is this sort of macroscopic, microscopic kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, on the one hand, you, you have these huge, massive, in, um, you know, installations, and then, but, but, but they're made up of all these small little parts. And as you say, each one is sort of worlds within worlds in a mm -hmm. way. That's um, and so that, you know, you, you can almost see as much in one of these small ones as you can in, in one of the very large installations. And so it's, it's interesting, you know, you're always going between macroscopic and microscopic, I think, within, yeah. in, in terms, as a viewer, in terms of your sense of this work. Well, it's an understanding of the infinite and the infinitesimal, you know? So, you know, like uh, as yeah. you sort of, um, you know, move through this planet, I think that it's an understanding of what we are and how we relate to uh, things constantly. And uh, once you sort of get that in, your body is a part of how you live, then you have no choice but to sort of create in that very same way. So uh, uh, I'm not trying to avoid or um, uh, be um, uh, in control of, uh, of, of, of things that are natural. So, so uh, once, like I said, once you're respectful of those things and they, you know, your materials and how you sort of view things, all these things will culminate and come together and make sense. And you don't have to question it anymore. You're just creating now. But you're creating with this as a part of an understanding um, that you don't you really have to reiterate. It's just there, you know. So that's like my controlled materials is exactly that too. It's like uh, I'm not, you know, like uh, saying, okay, I'm going to take this material. I want to do no. I, you know, the material becomes me, and I am, you know, and, 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 and absolutely uh, not inseparable from that material when I'm working on it. So I'm respectful for what it has. Well, to you offer. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what, I mean, one of the things you, you often say, and I think it's so interesting way of putting it, is you say, I am the weather in mm -hmm. the sense that, you know, th these are not, these are not found things. You, you, mm -hmm. if, if they've been, you know, people sometimes assume that you've just sort of found things that have been aged by, you know, the elements or whatever, but you are the weather. You are the one who, who weathers them in a way, which I think is a very interesting way of, of talking about this work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, yes, I, I think that, that uh, yeah, I'm not separate from. So, so uh, it, it's, it's, it's easy to sort of like, um, uh, for me anyway, to sort of, like I said, you know, dip in and out of, of these different realizations. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, let's, let, let's go uh, the next one, which um, you were speaking about sort of a cosmic sensibility and this feels like it has that to me. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and this is, it, yeah, mm -hmm. is, was this your first public work or, I mean, you've done a number and we're gonna talk about your public work and how that's different. Than, I, yeah. but, I, was this your first public piece? Public art piece? I uh, don't think so. I mean, like uh, we were talking about Madison, Madison Park, of course. Right. Uh, this came maybe sometime thereafter, and you know, like uh, you know. Oh, so this is after Madison Square. Okay. Yeah, this would be yeah. after. It's not too long ago, but obviously it's, oh, okay. it's so we're a little out of sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's yeah. okay. I mean, it's like um because this gives it, you know, like uh, as far as the uh uh, uh this this uh, piece, like the one that we just saw, this is in that very same family. You know, so they're they're uh, working um, new materials uh, as I'm sort of like gathering um, new information, and uh, you know, like uh, the, the, the those new materials are now becoming a part of uh, uh, you know the larger language. And so, if I decide to do another piece like this right now, it's like I'm working. You know, I've been working with like porcelain right. in my journey to China, and now those things are starting to sort of work their way into, you know, uh, 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 these uh, paragraph pieces. You know, right? Yeah. Well, we have another um, a sort of related work, I think, if we get the next um, image here. Mm. That's at the De Young. Um, yeah, that's yeah, uh, the De Young. Yeah, yeah, can we? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And so here again, yeah, you and, and you can see, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it is. It's a it's a language or a code. I mean, it mm -hmm. it's very interesting. You know, I mean, and it, it, I don't know, somehow it feels like the it feels digital too, you know. I mean, and I don't know if this is a. That's, that, no, no, you're right. You can't be wrong, honey. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not, very I'm nice. Not, I'm, I'm, not like telling, I'm not telling you. You're, you're telling me. So I think that, like, uh, 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 it, it's a shared experience. So you know, like, if you see digital, I'm. It's in there. Braille is in there. I mean, uh, 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 hieroglyphics. I mean, it's it's uh it's all inclusive. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, and and I think that well, that's what's so interesting about the work because, yeah, you're right. Some of it feels ancient, and yet it also feels inc incredibly modern and even futuristic. Mm -hmm. You know, it it seems to go. It, it's about nature, but then it's also about kind of industry. You know, I mean, it it's about a kind of freedom, but it's about also a confinement. So you, I mean, you play back and forth. I think between these um, these different opposites, and and you hold them all in a kind of balance which is sort of amazing actually is that, that so that they have you know this sort of tension between them but but you know they they don't overwhelm each other mm -hmm. yeah it's an understanding of composing composition i mean all this goes back to uh, uh my understanding of how to paint and how to draw i mean i think that like uh, artists these days i mean the computer is such that you, you know it it, it 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 you don't need to actually um be able to physically do those things anymore you know uh, but my facilities was, was such back in the uh, 70s uh, that that uh, 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 how to sort of like compose things on a, uh, on a on a surface and have it read, have it be legible, you know. So uh, um, yeah. yeah, so I definitely can take things and, and uh, turn them into a, a, a you know like a, a, a well orchestrated uh, or a well orchestrated understanding of like a, of, of noise, you know. So yeah. You know, um, and you go, and I mean, the next piece that we're, if we can look at the next image, you know, again, this one, I guess, is from Crystal Bridges. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that really shows that how you move from those, to, you know, that, that from one to another. I mean, that's, it's kind of seamless in a way. I mean, you, you know, we have this is almost explosive, you know, kind of um, element here. And then you, you, you know, you feel this energy as if it's sort of emanating energy. And, you know, there's a kind of energy that I guess holds all of these different, very dis diverse um, kinds of elements together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you want to say anything in particular about this, um, this installation. <laughs> You know, I'll, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. I get caught looking too. So it's like, um, I, 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 uh, it's not too often that I have the opportunity to sort of look at images, go backwards and look at images. So um, in accordance to where I am right now, and then looking like at something like this, it's like, wow, you know, like um, something new has been added, so to speak, in the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, this uh, new exhibition. Uh, uh, you can, you know, like, you know, uh, that there's been an invasion of this very same uh, motif, you know, uh, right. At least, like, yeah, we'll see old. that in a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. it's uh, interesting yeah. to look back and say, like, wow, this is um, you know, I'm always asking what if, you know, so I'm never really like, you know, like a, a content with uh, uh, you know, like oh, you know, this idea of reinventing the wheel. 
you know, it's like, uh, that's, that's always been um, a, a, a negative and a positive as I move forward, because I always want to sort of like add something new, or at least like explore what's possible. So um, what if it's probably the, 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 uh, the, the question that comes up whenever I'm just sort of standing in front of, of anything that I create, you know, which is always in danger, you know, of like pushing it over the edge, you know, or going too far, you know. Right, right. Well, and that, and that's, I think, the, what's the beautiful tension of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, that's that, that and I know that's well, now, necessary, but it is, it is it is exhausting, but it is it's a necessary sort of like a, a transition that I have to sort of go through, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. It must drive curators crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <Some of them. laughs> it does. It scares the hell out of them, you know. So I I, I think that like uh, that that's just um. You know, it's an accepted, you know, uh, um, a thing when it comes to sort of working with me that, uh, you know, like uh, what I thought I was going to get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I ended up with this, you know. So yeah. it's uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm pushing, you know. Yeah. It's like jazz musicians call it reaching, you know. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's like, a, 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 so it's like a, this idea that, that uh, um, uh, uh, you can't really just settle on this uh, or do things by route, you know. Right, exactly. There, there, yeah. there has to be, yeah. you, you know, can't, like a, yeah, you can't a have a plan. You don't have a, you don't, you know, you don't have this sort of, yeah, little, you know, um, plan that you give to the curators. It's no, just like, no, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> keeps them on edge, but this is a good thing. I think. Right. Well, oh, I think, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to now, we're going to go to the uh, Madison Square work because mm -hmm. this was, um, this is a one of your um, kind of, well, I'd say your most one of your most important public pieces, and this is a piece where you um, really were able to explore relationships with the public in a way that I think you can't so much in a in a museum or a gallery or an institutional setting. So, do you want to talk a little bit about what this is, what how this came about, and and what your thinking was about it? Well, I'll tell you, that this is this is the. Uh... The uh, second idea that I had, because the uh, the first idea I had was this uh, kind of um, exploding tree monster that was going to be in the center of the park, and how we're going to orchestrate that, you know, without decapitating people. I I, I think I had to be the uh, voice of reason at that meeting, you know, because uh, 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 I had a lot of champions of my work in that room who wanted to see this thing realized, and I said, you know what, we're going to end up killing somebody. So I said, we, we need to sort of realize another <laughs> another direction. And like, uh, um, and I said, what if I uh, did what most people, when they approach a public situation, what they want to do is anyway, uh, challenge the surroundings by, you know, say like, okay, we have trees, let's make it at least the size of a tree or as big as a tree. Um, uh, uh, but this is like, this situation is framed by the, the, the greatest city in the world, you know, uh, with these monumental skyscrapers, as you can see the uh, Empire State Building back there. So I said, you know what, we need to sort of deal with uh, um, uh, 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 you know, something that, you know, what, you know, just be a different approach. So I say, what if I took it to the ground, you know, rather than trying to sort of challenge by going up, what well, let's do something that was, you know, like uh, actually a rug, you know? So that, that was the beginning of like how City in the Grass had, it, you know, this is like, well, let's, let's, uh, let's give it a, 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 a whole other take, you know, what sculpture, uh, you know, in a public situation can be um, and color. And, and this one, Mm -hmm. Right. Color. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say color. And it's also, I think, very influenced by your travels as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, at this at the time, I actually I was uh, 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 I was traveling back and forth to China and working with these artisans uh, in Jingajin, uh with uh, porcelain and glazing. And um, I remember uh, Brooke Rappaport saying to me that uh, she says, that, well, you know, like uh, maybe our color is going to start uh, becoming a part of this piece. And at the time it was, you know, I was still working with my, you know, my usual sort of, uh, 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 um, you know, like uh, earth tones. And she was right, you know, you know, in the end I started like dragging all these like colors back into the work. I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, this was in the making for almost like, almost like four years, I think, uh, uh, coming to sort of a conclusion about what this piece was gonna be. But it was, you know, highly influenced by what I was going through at the time. So um, those trips to China, and working with those artisans definitely absolutely influenced, you know, the direction uh, of not only this piece, but all my future works, you know, because color is now, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's here to stay, you know? Right. 
Mm -hmm. And we'll see that in the when we get to the current um, installation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, of course, that's interesting about a, a public work is that, you know, you, you you don't have a controlled setting anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. and so the work really has to interact with the world around it um, and the people around it. And yeah, let's look at some of these images here. So this is to how, you know, I think maybe this is the first time that that people could actually touch your work they could more than touch your work jump on your work um you know so how did you you know i mean how and how did you feel about that and and did the well, work I mean, i'll tell you honestly once i saw that happening um i couldn't have predicted it when i was working on it in the studio but when once it got out of the studio um i mean i built it so that you know, if something like this did happen, that there was uh, the idea of uh, that that it was safe to sort of climb on them and um, uh, 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 you know and do whatever, you know. And um, uh, uh, but I, I I couldn't have anticipated the uh, the kind of uh, excitement uh, that uh, uh, people you know and, and children. I mean, just like they were just all over it, like ants. So I would. So it's like uh, I I think that if I were to do a public work now, I would try to in incorporate that very same thing. You know uh, that that in order to sort of complete this piece, as I said in my philosophy, that the the, the viewer is, it should be complicit. You know, and and this was actually the physical manifestation of that. You know, that people were actually able to sort of like you know um, really partake and jump and and become a part of the work. You know, and and that you know you this had to be a different different set of materials as well mm -hmm. because That's so right. much of the work that you normally do you know i think is much more fragile so mm -hmm. how did you well, yeah what 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 is the material here how did you deal with that well this is colored sand as the, for the colors uh but um and i can tell you also that uh this is it's not permanent even though this piece has been traveling now for like got to be like two and a half years of moving around different locations uh, um, it's interesting that the uh, 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 the aging of the materials, it's, it's almost like the same processes that go into uh, when I'm working with things in the studio. So uh, this idea of becoming the weather, that's one thing, but when the weather actually is uh, uh, one of the uh, deciding factors on what completes this piece, I mean, this piece is still aging, you know? Uh, uh, so once I get, you know, uh, you know, have the opportunity to, you know, get it back, uh, um, it would have already gone through a natural process. And I, all I would need to do now is interject me into it you know yeah and i think we have another so there's another let's see the next image i think we have another um image of people interacting mm -hmm. yes it would have been what what you got oh, 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 okay. the snow. No, we have okay, we <laughs> have the snow. Have the snow. i like to see that one <laughs> <laughs> go to the next one <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but we so but also yeah so I mean, one of the things that's great about those Madison Square installations is that they go through a whole year. So you get to be there for the, all of the seasons. And so the works have to interact with that as well. And this is very beautiful and it has, of course, yeah. a very different quality. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's, um, I, I, yeah, I don't know my work outside. So this is um, it's, it's sort of great to be able to like uh, say a war. It's like uh, you know, these new additives, you know, and natural yeah. ones, you know. Right. Well, you you are the weather, but here is the weather also. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got two kinds of weather going on here. <laughs> yeah, and then I think the next image, if we can get that, is um, what mm -hmm. happened to what part of this? Right. Let's see. Yeah, Let it continues to sort of morph. Here we go. And become, you know, like a, I guess this little kid doing his his thing in front of it. But that that uh, the uh, uh, the um, uh, stupas or towers that were created, I decided to sort of make a, a you know, a sort of a combination of stupa. And this, as you can see, is a, 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 a combining all of the uh, uh, different uh, uh, elements to sort of like create a new monster, you know? Right, yeah. And this is in the wild. Is, is, is that temporary or permanent? This, oh, this was a, this was a oh, temporary. No, this is, temporary. This, is a, this is a, this should be the last, the last, uh, um, uh, um, uh, install this piece, and it's in Connecticut now at the Wadsworth Anthemium. So, yeah, and then I'll get it, have the opportunity to get it back and transform it into his, uh, into something else, you know, which wow. I'm very yeah. much looking forward to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now, if we go to the next image, um, I think, can we get the next image here? Yeah, that's it's, a, it's actually of, one section of the Madison yeah. piece uh, that I was able right. to sort of like take and and bastardize, you know, and turn right. it into something else. So this is yeah. just a, a, an idea of what yeah. could be. Uh, and this is just one section of, of a piece that's made of like maybe, a, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's almost 200 parts, 
you know, like uh, uh, in order to create that. Wow. You know that uh, that carpet, but this is just one of the sections. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. And and we see here also close up that uh, how color is is impacting so mm -hmm. differently in your work here than in in the earlier work, which yeah had a, it was very much sort of charred and mm -hmm. yeah weathered and and sort of very kind of almost apocalyptic this gets a this is sort of less apocalyptic in a way mm -hmm. it seems well, let's, to me. yeah i think that like uh this is a combination of what because at the same time the madison piece was up the uh um uh, i started an exhibition at the long gallery and it was made up of of uh, this uh, exploding uh right it's like carpet parts you know is that the next one can we take a look at the next image yeah i think i think we have that yeah, yeah we have that go. if we can that's get it. the next image. so yeah that's that's the, yeah uh, that's and and so if you can imagine those two things are happening at the go. same time you yeah. know so like a, yeah. uh this explosion of color um and i think that was a, probably the uh, uh the uh, correct approach to um uh, uh how uh, color has now become or has affected you know um this part of my journey so i think that like uh um uh, right. uh, uh, this is this is uh that's color <laughs> there's no doubt about that wow exactly. it, 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 yeah wow uh, yeah yeah but and, uh, and you the, see that again in the next one yeah. yeah i mean if we could get the next image yeah well i mean you get here you get like oh, uh, people people, <laughs> people are reacting to which it, it's it's a continuum of what was happening with the uh, madison uh madison square park piece the um uh, uh, uh people you know felt a need to sort of interact with the work and uh, uh, they have it happen twice in a row uh, is something, you know, um, people need to sort of do their Instagram hits, their selfies or whatever in front of the pieces. So I think that that's uh, uh, something that I could not have anticipated. So, uh, um, uh, and I, I, you know, I, I, I you know, it, it's, uh, let's go to the next one because I think it's just more of uh, these uh, sort yeah. of like interactions. Oh yeah, this but, is but, uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I could have orchestrated, yeah. you know, like, um, you know, a back and forth, or you know, between uh, the uh, uh, the viewer and the work, I, it could have been better than any of these. Well, what's the next one? We got next one. <clears throat> yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, what do we have next? Next. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. I mean, <laughs> but th th to be able to um, pull this out of people, I mean, that's that's something, and I I, I think that uh, uh, I, I I need to I need to study that more. You know. You know? Well, you know, this goes back to the Merce Cunningham thing. I mean, it's performative, you know, yeah. it's the same, mm -hmm. except now these aren't professional dancers. These are just regular people, but they're doing the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, it's uh, very moving. I mean, like um, the experience from my end, you know, the, yeah, I, I, I need to need to study this more. Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, next, next image, I think is also, Oh, this is, yeah. yeah, believe it or not, that that's the very same piece we were looking at, but it's now actually a different configuration, which, as you know, like, um, I will take something and, and transform it in a minute into, like, its next iteration of self. So uh, this is at the Wadsworth and, like, uh, uh, in between her. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, so it's like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. The, I mean, that, yeah. that interaction is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have, when we do the install, I'll have to take the solid wit with me. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I think it, this yeah. is, uh, yeah, it's uh, in harmony, you know. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And so I think now we're moving into the current um, show. Uh, can we get the next image, please? Mm. Um, yeah, here we are. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it seems like to me this, the, the, the show that's up right now, um, it, 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 well, it just encapsulates so many of the themes and the ideas that we've been talking about here. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. also, I guess, sort of whole pieces as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to just maybe give us a little, walk us through this show a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, we go to the next image because we get a close-up of this, I believe. The next image. Yeah, just to sort of give you like, okay, you can, you know, literally see like uh, 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 works uh, that would have been considered you know, uh, works within, you know, within themselves. I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, you know, this, this piece, uh, this type of work actually can take on just by anything that I create. So um, this is really an experiment to sort of see or to test that, you know? So uh, as I sort of moved through the, uh, how to compose something like this, it was like, okay, what if I tried this? 
uh, because you've seen in some of the other iterations of this very this very type of piece, the one at Crystal Bridges and the one at the airport, um, uh, uh, there was an understanding uh, that okay, you can put this in, this in, and this in, and it, it, it kept taking on uh, or was capable of taking on different uh, and new things. But I think this one, this piece uh, in particular at the exhibition, uh, definitely pushes it to the edge um, of like okay, you are now painting. Uh, this idea of, uh, of, of allowing um, uh, uh, this understanding of how things could be constructed and make sense one to the other. Uh, once you start adding, you know, a, a, a large a swaths or brush strokes into a composition, you are now painting. <laughs> and so, and drawing, really. So, I mean, this one is absolutely a, a gigantic drawing or painting. So to speak, mm -hmm. and I, uh, 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 and 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 that the idea of, of of a controlled composition it goes you know right out the window you know so I think that this one definitely challenges that mm -hmm. this piece that absolutely well, they, and you know the other thing I guess that you know we haven't really talked that much about but when looking at your work at ours I mean it makes me think of you know you you know there there are a kind of um, I guess, a dialogue with other artists, like here with this, um, you know, sort of the white folded fabric, you know, I think of Sam Gilliam, you know, the, you know, there's a sort of Kiefer-esque quality to the sort of burned wood. I mean, so that's another interesting thing is that the, the work often has such, um, you know, it, it, it has such a dialogue with other artists. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I mean, you're, you're, so it's like you're part of this larger conversation. That's correct. That's correct. I'm not separate from, you know, I mean, yeah. none of us are actually, we're, we're, you know, we're all standing on this history. So I think that as I'm pushing forward, I'm dragging all this other history that belongs to, or belongs to all of us, you know, you know, so it's, it's, a, right. it, it's, a, you know, we can call it a, you know, like a, 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 a personal journey, but also a, a journey of the collective, you know, so like, a, um, mm -hmm. and it's all inclusive, you know, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, then the next, so if we go to the next slide, um, mm -hmm. yeah, this, I mean, here, I mean, I, piece. yeah, and the other, on the other wall. So a, as you can see, like, uh, if you can imagine, I mean, I don't think we have, you can see that the full panorama of, uh, of that actual one piece, but the, uh, I, I would say that that whole exhibition is an, uh, is an installation, you know, like, uh, there's no breathing room, you know, uh, you know, like, uh, so from one piece to the other, uh, they sort of like, you know, um, you know, like, uh, uh there's this unbroken chain. And, um, right. you know, props to my uh, gallery, uh, Lalong and Mary Sabatino, you know, like uh, uh, for allowing me to sort of uh, realize uh, uh, this piece, you know, like uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's challenging, um, but it's, I think that like understanding what an artist uh, sort of needs to do in order to sort of like make it to its next uh, uh, iteration of self, uh, 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 you know, you, it does take uh, uh, brave people, others, you know, like I, like I said, like my gallery to sort of allow me uh, 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 to realize this so that I can sort of like, okay, understand what has to happen next, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just, you know, this, the, the installation is so charged with energy. I mean, you, I think you can get a sense of that here. And, and as you're saying, they're all, it's all interconnected, but here you feel like this close concentration of, of form and then it explodes outward and, you know, and it, it kind of moves in waves and it, it undulates and you know it sort of electrifies the whole space it's, it's a really a, a very immersive installation mm -hmm. so again you know going back to that Merce Cunningham performance I mean you you it, it feels like that was very um crucial in a way um, <laughs> yes I mean I, Mer Merce absolutely but I will say that my uh, connections to uh, 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 uh you know filmmakers uh, like Stanley Kubrick I um, mean he uses something very similar to uh, Merce Meaning, um, in terms of being able to sort of build, a, 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 you know, or compose a film in sections, you know, like I think, like in two thousand one, it's probably more most evident uh, of how he sort of composes and makes a film. You know, like you have like these these all these very um, uh, uh, well um, uh, uh, executed, you know, like uh, 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 you know set pieces that come together to make this magnificent film. And um, and Merce was doing the very same thing, and I say, you know what? There's 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 a way that you can sort of like have this or add this to a part of how you make things, you know. So uh, yeah. uh, and and that, that you know, it's just an additive. It's another additive, you know. 
Well, I think it's what the thing about your work is that it it it, it takes part, partly because of the scale, whatever. But like film, like performance, it takes place in time. I mean, there's a, mm. the element of time seems very important in the work. You mm -hmm. know that that you are you know you think of sculpture or installation often as being a more static kind of thing, but there's nothing static about this. And and um, you know there's there's a kind of sense that you know. Well, first of all, it takes time to experience the whole thing, but it, it also, it feels like it's describing time in a way or, or sort of different kind of actions of time. Mm. I don't know. Um, point, Eleanor. I, mean, I mean, I think I like the way you said that, honey. <laughs> well said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I would say that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now the, the exhibition, if we can get the next um, image, um, also contains, um, kind of more discreet feeling pieces mm -hmm. like these. And and do you want to talk about that? Well, Ellen, right, actually a question to you is that do, do, w w as you're going through the exhibition, um, like you, you're saying discreet, I, I, I know that when you walk in there, that we're looking at these things as singular, like we're looking at this piece. But I think that if you're walking in the space, it becomes, or it gets pulled in by the overall experience. Sure. So there's no, oh, I don't know sure. no, there's no, the a moment when there's yeah. a singular, <laughs> I don't think that this, this, there's no breathing room in this exhibition. So there's no room for a singular. And um, I think that there, there'll be an opportunity, as I was telling the gallery, where you'll have these works as singulars, and then they'll, they'll be able to tell you what, what they're about. But within this context, uh, they were a part of a larger installation. And like, um, and I think it is an unbroken chain. So, um, and I think it's only realized if you're in the space and you will know that right away, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, yeah. uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is. Um, well, things, things yeah. speak to each other across from walls. And I That's think right. the next mm -hmm. image too, you can see, I get a sense of that as well mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, and yet there is a more, a more sense of order in, you know, mm -hmm. this section of the exhibition, you know, mm -hmm. go back to sort of the grid and then the, the breakdown of the grid in a way, you know, mm -hmm. here, you know, we've, we've got, you know, this, this somehow it feels more, um, you know, that you're playing more towards the order side of, of your mm -hmm. sensibility um, than mm -hmm. the chaos side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that this is, this is a, 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 you know, a slight respite, but it's not really. <laughs> Like I said, if you're in the <laughs> exhibition, if you're in the exhibition, it, 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 you know, it does not look that way. I think you run to this room and right. then you don't get another break. You get more punch, just punches. <laughs> right. So yeah, we, we got another image of this. Uh, this yeah, I think there might be another. Yeah, I think there's another, yeah, yeah, the next one. Yeah, yeah. And those, those are all in the same yeah. room. So yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah. no escape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we have here, and, now another the, the next image um I think also demonstrates um you know we're talking about how you using using pieces from other works but also using these elements here the color you know we see it feels like references to the Madison Square piece mm -hmm. you know that you're sort of here again bringing it, it I mean th this show feels like a kind of culmination of of you know, a lot of work that you've been doing over your career and, you know, you're sort mm -hmm. of looking at it now, taking those elements and putting them together in a way that, you know, they, the Madison Square um, installation did not have these the, the kind of very dark, you know, more apocalyptic kinds of, of elements. And here you put them together. So it, it's like you're, you're, you know, you're taking your different, you know. Um, family you tree. Know, yeah. It's a family tree. Yeah. <laughs> So I think that yeah, yeah. it's just, uh, it, it, yeah, they're, they're definitely little maquettes, literally of uh, of works that I created, and so like uh, uh, um yeah, so it'd be you know you can almost follow the uh, uh, the thread and you'll see uh, uh, pieces say I recognize that one that one there, but there's uh, maquettes like all over the place you know, so it's like a like right. almost like a, a a large drawing you know um right. and an understanding of a history you know. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it feels so. Yeah. Here we have, I think, another. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah some, another sort of close up here of, of, of some of the images. So mm -hmm. do you feel um, it, one thing that I was wondering about? So you were working on this show, I guess, during COVID. I mean, and, and that sort of, you know, we've all had much more of a sense of sort of confinement and questions of sort of freedom and, and confinement have been sort of very, you know, on everyone's mind. Did mm -hmm. that have an impact on the way that you organized this show or thought about this show? Yeah, I, I you know, I, I think that like probably for a lot of artists, I'm having uh, uh, this much time, you know, sort of unbroken time, you know, um, 
uh, mostly you're you're we're, we're we're sort of like on this kind of um uh, uh, this kind of treadmill where you're next 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 situation next exhibition you know but having a whole year and something uh, where you didn't have to do that or had a this fantastic excuse for not going out you know and you just like we're just in the studio you know this unbroken moments you know um, you know I, 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 and I mean obviously there are a lot of things that got created but we're only looking at the things that actually made it out of the studio uh, uh, you know from that period. And um, I certainly like to believe that, like, uh, you know, that we all have learned something uh, uh, from this moment, you know, like, uh, uh, not just artists, but all of us sort of like, okay, um, you know, like, uh, uh, I mean, certain things that we're taking for granted now, it's like, you know, like, uh, we're, 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 uh, uh, we understand that the importance of those things, you know, uh, small yeah, things, yeah. seemingly small things, you know, but as an artist, I mean, we, we you know, we, we're, we're, we're tr always traveling inward that journey is not just the surface journey, but it's one that actually takes place within us. So, um, you know, like I was able to pull or go even deeper because there was this like unbroken uh, uh, time, you know? And, um, you know, like I, 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 I mean, it's like, I, I, I doubt very much if I ever see anything like that again, but um, it's always interesting to uh, yeah. speak to artists about these things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, I know. I mean, I think it's been, it's well, well, we'll look back on it and we'll see, but you're right. I think it will have changed all of us in certain ways. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, for, for people, creative people, it can have been a gift, a part of it. Yeah. To, yeah. I, I don't say that too loud because <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I know it was a mix. It was like I, I wouldn't say mixed blessing. It was this blessing? And I was like, wow, let's get all this time. It just, yeah. it only took me three days to realize that this was this is a great thing for me, you know, and dove, dove right into it, you know. Um, yeah. uh, but like I said, it's like you 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 only have that conversation with uh, uh, with uh, people who understand exactly what you're talking about, you know. Yeah. Right. Yes. Exactly. You have to be careful. I think is that yeah. now we have another image from the installation. I think there's another one. Mm. Let's yeah, that's see. that very that's thing. That, yeah. Looking at. Yeah. yeah, just more details of that. But what else we got? What comes I think up? One more. Yes, here we go. Oh, no, we're on a travel. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, several more. Yeah. Yeah, this is okay. on a travel. Okay, now, yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 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 having talked about being alone in your studio, being, you know, being focused in your studio now, mm. but, and that has been obviously a, an influence and, and has helped you with this show. But mm. the other thing, of course, is that, you know, throughout your, you know, the, the last, you know, 20, 30 years, you've done a lot of traveling. And we had talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. some of the places that you've been some of the um ways in which that has influenced your work and here well maybe you'll talk about some we have some uh, kind of a little travel log here but it's uh -huh. very interesting you know in terms of how that has an impact on your thinking and your work well i mean like oh my god so I, the, the the planet i mean, I mean there's all these cradles when is all these cradles of civilization that's one thing but there's all these, all also these uh, sort of natural wonderments like uh, the redwood forests, which we're seeing here. Um, uh, let's go to the next one. Yeah, and I think that like uh, uh, that more of the redwood forests. Oh, I love I mean, that. You can, you can you can see the kind of influences on my work uh, uh, through you know uh, through my travels. I mean, obviously uh, uh, these uh, 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 monstrous shapes, uh, almost tree-like images, uh, are, are 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 coming because of you know. You've taken this into your, your, you know, into your vocabulary, you know. Uh, here I am right in the uh, tree, right. you know. Uh, what's the next one? Wow, yeah. Yeah, this is China. And this is my, my first trip to China. Uh, after seeing the uh, Great Wall, I say, you know what? I need to, you know, stay here for a longer period of time. So over a four-year period, going back and forth, I was working uh, with these artisans in Jingzhen uh, with uh, porcelain, and um, they had 25-foot kilns that were, this monstrous things, you know, like, uh, um, and we're able to sort of like create um, uh, works that I never would have been able to create in, in the States, you know? So, so um, uh, can we see, see the next one? You can see some of the things that, yeah, I mean, this is, the vases are like 20 something feet tall, you know? So, uh, it, it, you know, just the, the very idea uh, that these guys have been making these things for eons. And I came in, I started smashing things, you know? And they, they, they thought like, oh, this is like, they were sweeping it up and throwing it out. And I was like, no, this is art. And, and, and you know, like uh, uh, once they understood that, 
you know, um, I will tell you that they actually started like creating some of this break because they saw that there was money at the end of it, you know? So they say, well, you mean when you smash things, you smash things, they actually can make money with that. And so um, actually a friend of mine got in touch with me uh, about um, a clothing store that uh, had, uh, in, uh, this is in Shanghai, that had uh, 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 works that were absolutely copies of my works. <laughs> Wow. And this is all the wow. things I've been doing in Zhengzhen, but you know, as things move around China, it's like uh, there are no copyright laws or anything like that. So whatever you're creating there, you know that you're, it's going to turn up in a clothing store or grocery store as decoration. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I I I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't bothered by this, but because I knew that it was a fair trade off. Because what I ended up coming back with is like those color explosions and and all these things that have affected my yeah. work. And I think that this is a fair trade-off, you know? So they, they can go ahead and, sure. you know, use me as decoration or whatever to make their money. <laughs> but but uh, uh, but in the end, I think that, the, you know, there's, there's all this information that's out there. Uh, and if you're an artist of, 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 of any kind, you know, uh, like I said, poet, musician, or, or sculptor, painter, um, um, you know, you put your body out there to be a receiver of information, you know, you just become this antenna. You're, you're coming back with that information. And you can literally make art about that or you can just like let it happen. You know, I kind of like let it happen, you know? So let's look at the next image. Yeah. No, that's Machu Picchu. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I mean like traveling uh -huh. to the Nazca, you know, seeing the Na Nazca lines um, uh, in, in Peru. I mean, it's, it's just been this, I, I was on my way to Egypt just before the lockdown and like, uh, and that will be our next trip. Is sort of like, I want to try to hit some of these cradles of civilization and just sort of see what happens, you know? I'm not predicting anything, you know? But uh, I think that like uh, moving around yeah. and taking information is absolutely vital, you know? I mean, there's the inward journey and there's the right. outward journey. Right now, I think it's time to take in more information from the uh, outward, you know? I think, I think we're all ready now for an outward journey. <laughs> I think after this last- <laughs> Yeah, day. I would say that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. thanks. This is this has been. I think that's it's been great, and I know that there's a lot of questions. So um, why don't we move to the the questions? And I guess um, I don't know, Anya, you're going to be in charge of the questions. Yes. Yeah, I have a uh, a lot of questions on deck. Thank you so much for that conversation, Eleanor and Leonardo. This has been so fun uh, to listen to you, and I, I'm really excited to get into the Q and A. Um, our first question is from Andrew Woolbright. And if you're ready, you should be able to turn on your mic. Are we on? Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Hi, Eleonardo. Thank you so much for this. This was like <laughs> the perfect thing to listen to today. Um, I wanted to ask you about how you, what the relationship is between compulsion and gesture within your work, or if those are fair to evaluate. Because it made me think, I put it in the chat, you know, like, um, uh, like I'm really interested in this idea that you're like suggesting shows and exhibitions that if the work gets back to you, you keep working on it. Mm -hmm. And whether it's, whether it's compulsion, whether it's uh, exhibitions as a form of gesture, both resist commodity in a way that I'm like really interested in with everything. So is it, is it both or one or the other, or, or is it just a familiarity with your work? It, it, you know, I'll tell you, honestly, it, it has to do with, you know, dealing with um, the idea of, if, you know, this whole thing about signature and self-importance, okay? Uh, once you've sort of gotten past that one, you know, your ego, so to speak, this idea that these things are precious, that you can't touch them. And uh, 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 you, once you've gotten past that, anything is possible. And when I say anything is possible, that means that you can elevate, you know, like continue to elevate. Just imagine the Grand Canyon and its layers, all that information, all that history that's stacked in there, you know, within everything that you touch, you create, they, they, you are now bringing forth a, a, something, a, a more information. The more information you pile onto that, the bigger and more powerful that thing will become. So the best works are made from <laughs> those okay. things that have already gone through that process. It, it's a no-brainer. I mean, if, if I were to like, you know, take, you know, like a new work and put it out there, if it got out there, then it's like, I'll look at that work later and I'll say, it's not cooked enough. 
it hasn't gotten to do enough life, you know, it has not gotten to do enough life. So I think that like uh, the idea of being able to sort of like uh, 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 one, like I said, get get past uh, of the self-importance or the idea that you can't touch something and that is sacred. I, I say, fuck that. Let's get on to the, you know, you know, like uh, where you adding on to more life force, more life force within the work. The strongest works are those, are those. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's incredible. <laughs> and I love thinking of it as life force. I put it in the chat, mm -hmm. but I'm from Chicago. And I used to hear the story that Ivan Albright was banned from the museum because he would go into the museum at night with a small palette and add to the painting. And they finally had to say, you no longer own this thing, it's ours. And they had to like keep guards looking out for Ivan getting in at like nine o'clock at night and painting. And I'm like, that that's the spirit right there. And, and yeah. that's that life force you said. I love that. <laughs> well said, brother, well said. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Leonardo. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank um, you. Our, that was amazing. Uh, our next question will come from Veronica Jackson. Hello, Veronica. Yeah, Where's you Veronica? Hey, hey, Leo. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? All right, honey. <laughs> Good to see you again. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I've got a couple of questions. Uh -huh. um, can you talk about shadows in your work? Do you plan for them or, and how do you want them to kind of like appear? So like, Number 305, some of the pieces, you know, some of the pieces within the piece really jut out mm -hmm. and they cause shadows mm -hmm. possibly on pieces below. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wonder if you thought mm -hmm. about that and how you want shadows to like live in your work. Well, you know, I like the idea that one, you're picking up on shadows, uh, but I will tell you honestly, in the studio, I work with fluorescent lights. And, um, mm -hmm. and they actually negate all of that. They, I'm able to see everything. Um, I, I, the idea of orchestrating with light thereafter or making work stronger by way of lighting it and la allowing shadows and drama to become a part of the work, I, I, I think that's just cheating. It's, and from my, from that, that is only from me. I, that, that for all the artists, they can do that and make, you know, do theater with their art. But I, I like to be able to see everything. Okay. Anything that I'm putting into it, I want to be able to see it. So with the fluorescent lights, you know, like um, they are they are about making your work as ugly and real as possible in the studio. When, now, when you get them out of the studio and you put them in these situations and you decide to light them, imagine all the information that's already there that you can now play with. I, yeah. I don't do lighting. I refuse to do lighting, you know, in the shows. I, I don't, meaning I allow the galleries and the museums to light the work. But I don't usually interject, almost never interject and in saying, you need a light there, you need to put that there, you need to put that. It's like, that's not my thing. And it's like, I think the work will not only become stronger for that, it's like, uh, it, it's, it's, it's I, already, I know what I put in it. I saw it. <laughs> right. So yeah. you're fine with the lighting when they do it and the things that they pick up possibly in shadows. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's all good, honey. All good. What was the other question? About yeah. installation. I know that sometimes you install the work but do you do it all yourself or do you have people helping you install it? No, I, I actually have, a, a, you know, like, a, in, you know, when it comes to like uh, this, the, uh, the whole Superman thing where I was actually making all the work, I still do a lot of that, of course. But now it's like, if I have to cut or create like 1200 boxes, I don't create cut 1200 boxes anymore. So it's like, man, I can put my energies into other things. So there, there are people who've been around me now, uh, one of my, uh, 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 assistance uh, Clement's been with me like for 14 years okay. and so he has an understanding of course of like how I make things how I like things and like uh, um, and it's this wonderful back and forth or balance between these people who actually who given themselves and actually become extensions of your journey nice and, and so like a uh, 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 um, uh, um, you know I, 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 I have to learn that one because I didn't really know how to you know, allow others sort of like, you know, uh, uh, interject and to become a part of, uh, of, of uh, how I'm sort of pushing through this life, you know? But, yeah. uh, but uh, what once I did, and they came through organically. I didn't like look for these people. They, Clement came by way of like, came, he came to build a studio and then he never left, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> you know, so 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 it's interesting to like watch like uh um uh uh, uh how he's like become uh, this other thing too. You know, like uh, uh, uh um um and um then of course there's like uh, 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 Melissa Diaz who's been with me I guess going on nine years. Like nice. um and she does you know like a, a pretty much and has a full understanding of like what has to happen in the studio on a day to day and like uh, um these are and 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 like I said I didn't look for these people they kind of like came to me at a interesting time and I didn't even know I needed them you know uh, cool. and now I can't live without them so it's like uh it's interesting as we sort of push through that 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 uh, uh that you're not alone you know and it yeah. really does depend on like uh, what your needs are and whether or not you're open to like uh, uh take on these uh, other energies into your life you know so I've been very fortunate yeah thank you good to see you it's a good to see you sweetie <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Veronica. Uh, those are great questions. Thanks. Uh, our, next, our next is coming from Richard Jacobs. And you can turn your mic on. Richard? Where's Richard? Hello. You must have got, you got scared. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <please. laughs> We'll return we to Richard. Yeah, we're, we'll return to Richard. Um, so our next question will come from Ellen Robinson, who's the managing director here at The Rail. OK. You are. Hi, Leonardo. How are you? Hey. Um, hi. I've been a big fan of your work for a long time, so it was great to, to see this talk today. And I love what you and Eleanor were saying about, and I agree so much with how your work you know, operates on so many levels, so successfully, conceptually, culturally um, um, and aesthetically. I guess my question too, since we have you here is, I'm, and I love the pictures of you and your travels, and I'm just wondering how you travel through the world and how you approach your accumulation of, of objects. And then if it's always for a piece or it, it's like a process of organization within the studio, just how you deal with what I imagine is, is, is so much material and, and also the process of weathering, as you described mm -hmm. it. Well, well, you know, like, um, I, 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 you know, don't work with found objects, Just keep that in mind. So that already can tell you that I'm gonna be traveling very light if I'm in another country. It's more about just, like I said, collecting information uh, by osmosis, by just being there. And like, uh, 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 so it's, it's this uh, constant flow of things, energies, uh, people, uh, the uh, the very idea that um, uh, you're in a cradle civilization, you might as well just get the hell out of the way and allow uh, these experiences uh, uh, to become you, you know? Um, and you don't have to force the issue. It's just like eating the same foods, for instance. Like when I was in China, I, I mean, if I told you some of the things that I ate there, I mean, they, <laughs> there's no editing. <laughs> they, eat, they eat yeah anything and everything. And so I ate anything and everything. Uh, um, uh, this just means that you're, you're you 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 they're inviting you in and um and they're allowing you to become a part of them uh um the more you sort of like um uh, 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 interject this or be you know uh, uh, allow yourself to have this full on experience uh, the, the the better off you will be as a as a person and i think especially as an artist so um this is this information now that you're gathering and you're moving into uh, 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 um um holistically speaking you know uh, territories you know um, um, because if I were to just stay here uh, um, in America, I think that that uh, uh, my my take on things would be sort of as a you know <laughs> one dimensional. Uh, put place yourself as an artist, like I think John Coltrane uh, said it or did it best. Um, as he was on his way out, he was out there collecting information and continue to sort of add to his um, his musical phrasing, you know. And I think that that's exactly what I'm doing. It's like I'm out and I'm collecting information, but this is by living, just living, just living in those situations. And then you bring yourself back to the studio. Guess what happened? <laughs> you know, something real happens. You know, something real. You know, and like he, and 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 it, and it doesn't have to be politicized. It's 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 absolutely. I have this experience. It's just going to come out. It's coming out. You know. Yeah. Thank you. Did I answer that, uh, uh, Ellen? I'm gonna say. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was that was great. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. You had a, there was something else within that question. You said something about 
Well, just the process of, of weathering too. That you well, weathering. No, no, yeah. that, that's that, that. You know, honey, it's just a matter of the, taking material um, and realizing the natural processes. If you're already in tune with uh, uh, the process of uh, from uh, the cycles of uh, like uh, from um, from birth, life, death. And regeneration, then you will understand like, okay, this material needs to go through these, these processes in order to sort of like uh, gain, you know, its intensified history of life, you know? So it's like a, it's like a, it's, it's like a book that you're creating. Every time you touch your materials, it's like a book of life that you're sort of, you know, taking these things through these transitions and then hopefully making potent and powerful, um, uh, 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 of, of, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, images, you know, or things, you know? Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to go to found objects. Found objects, they, it's already beaten into them. You know, all that information is already there. <laughs> You're just taking them and now working them into your composition. But I would like to actually go through the whole process, the weathering process. So you become the weather. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ellen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love that becoming the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Um, our next question, I think we can go to Richard, I hope. Um, you there, Richard? To be able to unmute. <laughs> but if not, I can read your question for you if you're mm. having some technical troubles. Mm. Um, it's a truly a lovely question. This is from Richard? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Richard asks, I remember your contagious laugh resonating in the hallways of the Cooper Union when we were kids. We were both very influenced by the incredible artist and mentor, Jack Witten. I'm wondering if you can articulate how Jack influenced your work in life. Yeah, Jack, Jack was, uh, was interesting all around. There's a piece that I created in 1992, uh, made of bales of uh, cotton, and Jack allowed me to use his studio. Um, and I uh, actually would push from 26th Street and 6th Avenue to Jack's studio. Uh, uh, which was on Lisbon Art behind Canal Street. It's like 30 something blocks. Uh, we'll push these uh, huge bales of cotton on a dolly. And I'm sorry that we didn't introduce the, uh, the uh, image of that, uh, infamous image of me pushing a bale of cotton down Broadway. But I, <laughs> it's all my hotly political. <laughs> but it was like, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, Jack was, you know, one in a million. And like, um, he took me on pretty much as, you know, um, uh, at, at son and I would visit him uh, in Greece uh for some something like seven eight years back and forth uh uh um, 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 uh certain summers and you know in in jack jack was um you know like what he did physically and uh what he did spiritually all these things were were, were so uh like this you know you had no choice but to learn from him you know and like uh, uh and there was like a, always like i said a fair back and forth because when i first joined or came to jack's class i was transferring in from parson school of design and I came in with all this facility and uh, Jack would, uh, you know, like uh, always put me on the spot in front of all the other students, you know, and like uh, it was always like, you know, um, seems to be more advanced, you know, it was just this idea that what I was creating um, had more to do with facility, my facility, than actually getting past that purified surface. And that was what Jack was about, you know, you know, like uh, this understanding of, um, of abstraction and then continue to sort of like push that. Uh, you know, like as far as he could stretch it, you know. Richard gives a thumbs up. Thank you, Leonardo. <laughs> Thank you so and much for that Richard. question, yeah, Richard. I'm, I'm sorry yeah. to see him. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next question will come from April Johnson, and you should be able to turn on your microphone. Mm -hmm. Hey, Leonardo. Uh, Hello, April. April. Hey, uh, I'm an artist. I would love to meet you sometime. And if you are in the New York, New Jersey area, um, I'd love to just connect. And, and oh, okay. <laughs> are you in your studio? Is that your studio? Yeah, I'm in my studio. <laughs> I'm working on paintings and I do sculptures and I have a piece down in Moravian University right now. Oh, so great. I've been working with some found objects and also some work that uh, things that I collected over a lifetime, like strange little objects that are inside of it, like woven together. And I would love to connect with you. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, honey, well, you have to come out and see the exhibition, you know, like um, uh, it's up until the 20, 23rd. I, I should actually be um, there on the last day, um, which is uh, the 23rd of this month. This month? And uh, what's yes. the, wh where's the, the actual? Gallery, Gallery de Long, Le Long, Gallery de Long, Le Long. Le Long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lalong. 
You got it. L E L O N G. Thank you. Yep. I'll be there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice you meeting. had a question, honey? You had a question? You had um, a question? The question, I, well, besides that, is that if you're going to be on the um, the East Coast, but the, the other question was did Louise Nevelson kind of connect with you in the early stages when you were young? <laughs> she, she, continue, she continues to come really? up. And I think that there, there are a lot of, I mean, like from Ava has to, to let Nevelson, the Jackson Pollock. I mean, they're, they're, I don't think anyone's ever been left out when describing my work. So, you know, I think that like, uh, and w which is all fair. And like I said, I'm not, not, not um, uh, disassociating myself with any of the artists that you're mentioning. I mean, like, I think they're all in there. Uh, when I, what, the first show that I did, uh, or, or at least the first show that got a lot of attention was at, at Direct Waxing. And uh, people were kept going on about uh, Joseph Boyce. Yeah, uh -huh. That's before they realized that I was, uh, you know, African American, you know, so, so like, uh, oh, yeah, and some people thought maybe, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, because of the bags, they don't, Ava Hess. So I think that like, uh, um, uh, um, yeah, there's just um, an ongoing list of, <laughs> right, right, of right. artists that are, are, are a part of, of my journey. So like, uh, 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 so definitely, um, um, uh, you know, um, probably the more, uh, more chaotic, a version yeah. of Nevelson, you right. know, I would do that. Was, so like, <laughs> it and made it completely interactive. Love to death. <laughs> uh, no, love, love to death for it. But like, um, I would have liked to have met her, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, we put on the gloves and go at it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but she was special, special, yeah. Thank you for answering that question. Yeah, my pleasure, honey. Yep, yeah. See you on the 23rd. <laughs> Thanks, April. And I, I've put a link uh, to the show in the chat. Um, again, if you want to check out the website. Um, mm. Our next question will come from our poet of the day, Charles. All right, Charles. <laughs> All ears. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was really enjoying what you were saying earlier about um, the art being an expression of the movement of the body. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at those pictures of everyone interacting with the installations, experiencing all that joy and playfulness. And then looking at that picture of you in the tree trunk with the roots around you and that smile on your face. I wanted to ask um, if you would talk about uh, the kind of uh, physical, emotional experience of making the work in the studio. Well, I mean, I, I would tell you there's a lot of pain. <laughs> there's a lot of pain involved because uh, uh, there's no way you can sort of like... Um, uh, make works like this are physically uh, tasking. I mean, it's like uh, you, you need to uh, put your body in the act, literally. So uh, um, you're absolutely right that, that uh, you are present when you're making these things um, because you can feel every aspect of them. Um, uh, even more so, like I said, like when you're putting 16 hours on a table saw for one thing, and then like, you know, having to now put all these parts together, you, you, you're, 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 it's a, it's a it, there's a kind of, um, how would I say, uh, almost a Zen focus that comes into play. Uh, and it's very meditative and can, and can be um, a, a soothing in ways too. Uh, um, but there is, a, there, there, there is a constant movement, like a shark, you know, <laughs> you know in the war. It's like you're, you're always swimming, you know, um, and always thinking. So there's never really, I don't have any real turn, you know, like a, you know, like a turn off switches, you know, like, a, so even when it's time to go to bed, it's like, oh, four hours, four hours later, I'm up and I'm working again. So it's, and that's been going on for, you know, since I left home back in 1980, you know? So like, uh, uh, it was not allowed when I was like living, you know, under my mother's roof where you can like, you could do like 24 seven of you, but like uh, uh, now that I'm like, you know, it's been almost like 40 years of uh, making art without like uh, having a job or having it work on anyone else's schedule, you know? So you can only imagine that there's this kind of, this, this constant beating of a drum, you know? And like, um, and always that question, what if? So that definitely keeps you keeps you moving, you know, and guessing and and asking, you know, asking questions. Yeah, looking forward to hearing your poetry, Charles. <laughs> thank you. That was a, a wonderful question, Charles. And um, thank you, Leonardo. And uh, our final question will come from our publisher and artistic director, Song Bui. No question. Thank no you. question. <laughs> it's just, I, I'm sorry. I was so much in the meeting today. Oh. I missed most of the conversation. So I don't want to 
create a question out of context, but no, mm -hmm. it's just maybe one question. Mm -hmm. I know that you were trained as an illustrator. Mm -hmm. You love comic books. Mm -hmm. So it was early on, but I also know that you listened to a black metal music at one point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so I wonder if that, that bear any, you know, relationship when you are making those massive works, Leonardo. Mm -hmm. You still listen to black metal, and how does that fit into the rhythm of working the labor? Well, I, I'll tell you honestly, like a, a you know, my um, uh, intake or vocabulary for uh, uh, information. I mean that it's you know, music has definitely been expansive you know, uh, my uh, library of music and actually film. So uh, a lot of these things are influences in the, you know, like, like the television is always on, you know, like uh, in all parts of this, in the studios, like three different televisions. And like, uh, so there's, uh, there's always this sort of, a, 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 you know, information uh, either coming through music or through uh, visual uh, images. And uh, uh, so the, the influence of, uh, or constant influence of these things, I mean, I do talk about these things a lot, actually, uh, 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 in lectures about like uh, the influence, of, like I said, like, like even like we talk about John Coltrane and mm -hmm. his, you know, like uh, uh, understanding of like how uh, uh, what uh, jazz music was so this, that it could take on just by any other music forms, you know, and uh, was well on his way uh, to sort of like integrating uh, uh, more of this. I mean, I think Love Supreme is probably the uh, 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 best example of of, uh, of of this sort of like amalgamation of different musics. But but you know, like I think a lot of other musicians have taken this on. But he was definitely into that, and I'm sort of always also cued into the idea that you can pick up information uh, uh, from all sources. You know, um, um, if the, your vocabulary just continues to expand out, and you're sort of adding to a larger language, which is which is our language, you know? So my travels are all about that too. It's like trying to sort of like continue to sort of like add to uh, or broaden the band, you know, so to speak, you know? So Egypt is next. <laughs> <laughs> and, know, and looking forward to that, yeah. You know, in, in some ways, I, since we just uh, create this new series with mm -hmm. Paul Glaston, this our friend, our historian based in Australia, Mm -hmm. idea of global abstraction, Leonardo, mm -hmm. came to mind, which is a series we are undertaking and trying to share among people we know from different parts of the world now. It's no longer just, you know, America or Europe. But yeah. mm -hmm. I think in just because we have Julie Meritu mm -hmm. on our NSE not longer, a few months ago for her show at the Whitney, Come, come, I mean, come thinking about it. There is a certain common shared language between your vortex reconfiguring of abstraction, quite similar to her in some way too. Mm, absolutely. So the idea of global abstraction is becoming more uh, accepted language. And I mean, I so I don't know, since you travel so much extensively, mm. I mean, with tremendous focus in, in solitude, Mm -hmm. And so I wonder how you would sh would would share with us that that perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, global I, the idea of global abstraction. I think that this is a, artists will understand this one implicitly. I don't think that uh, uh, we will have an, uh, ever a difficulty in understanding that uh, the world is, is expansive and they're without borders. So mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, I, you know uh, you know like a it, it, you wouldn't really be a serious artist if you weren't able to sort of digest uh, uh, this idea. Yeah. So um, as I'm moving forward, uh, it's only natural for me to sort of continue to sort of gather new information, be a receiver, be an antenna, and then bring that information back to, you know, like, uh, and then give it out, give it back, you know, uh, uh, you know, so, so uh, uh, through each and every one of us, we just, we're just kind of like this filter of, you know, as, we're, as it travels through us, we're going to give it back in a way that we understood, you know, or understand it. And then it becomes a part of a larger collective. So, and it's very simple. This is not complicated, <laughs> you know, like uh, no. this might overcomplicate something that's extremely yeah, simplistic. No. Well, and I think that like, uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's a, 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 you know, I think like I can say any artist worth his salt is, understands this one <laughs> and should be aggressively applying himself, you know, aggressively applying himself, you know, always aggressively, yeah.
Thank you, Leonardo. Thank you, Eleanor. I'm sorry I didn't hear the whole entirety of your conversation, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Very good. Yes, yeah. it's, a, it's a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Leonardo. Thank, Thank you. Leonardo. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Anya. <laughs> Thank you, Fong. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Eleanor and Leonardo, for this wonderful conversation and for all of you asked questions. Um, at the rail, we have a tradition of ending our community events with a poem. Um, and today I'm thrilled to welcome our poet laureate of the day, Charles Sionia, who we've already heard from, uh, to the stage. Poet, teacher, and editor Charles Sionia is from Brooklyn where they're working to externalize interior femme landscapes. They are the author of art book, Saw Palmettos, on hormones, community, and the brain time continuum, and chat book, Which One is a Bridge? And they also have uh, published three beautiful poems in our October issue of the Brooklyn Rail. So please, Charles, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful conversation. Um, I am going to get off Zoom and try to write a poem that's too big to get out of my apartment. Uh, I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. Um, and I'm going to read three small poems. The two of them are from the issue in the Brooklyn Rail. And I'm going to put them up just in case you're like me and like to read along as you listen. Um, so these poems are operating in a kind of similar spirit of digestion and reconstitution, um, bringing in work from other writers um, and friends. Uh, so Renee Gladman is the, the first source. Mouth weather. I wake up unwilling with a dog in my neck, everything moving, sluggish, molecular, cold. The kitchen table is a desk, so I don't have to step from the stream of your commentary or the walls heating up in morning's directions. A dog is about bringing the outside in while there is still an outside. Attention alters the temperature, movement on the level of vibration. Slight openings to press a cheek to and express the workday pores. Approach is a sensation. We're heading in non-parallel directions, leaving touch on the table. I invite you into the space of my body for study. Discovering operations of nearness and the adapter I need to interface with your inner delight. Everything on the table helps me reach for it. A chihuahua sleeps for 18 hours a day. I extend our bubble with a tongue and snowfall begins, leaving work obsolete. I like it when you tell me where your mouth has been. Begin can be replaced with any word that brings you closer. And the second poem is uh, a source of my friend Paco. <laughs> Open hours. Given a finitude of dances, I'd like as many you can give me. Exhausted in the glad spent morning from work and afternoon means time for breakfast and arriving back at you with the inside of me. In hours as material as these, love's both concentric selfishness. No time to love everyone even if we'd like. And since you pointed to the rabbit in the moon, I've had a new relationship to fullness. There are so many of us, no good but morning is the recurrent slip from I forgo it. The hours go on exchanging somewhere for elsewhere in love's index. I'm ready when you are in the next place we go looking. And I'll read one more poem. Uh, this poem takes its title from a Diana Ross tweet. The color of joy is pink. The pink of us is inside and highly specific. Community goes on nebulized and outward forever. Wouldn't you rather pick an affinity group or three? We get into more and better trouble that way than in the Brooklyn Volunteer Accountability Corps where the creeps just walk off regardless into the forever of us. But the more of you is better and every day, you never read the books I like, even when I buy them for you twice. And still the color of us is I bet you wouldn't unless you knew I was looking. All along, the self keeps atomizing, and joy is a shared term I don't know the name for. I'm here for rent parties, or to hold your hand in the hospital, where the self of us is more contested than ever, and other unnecessary untruths when you have everything right here. Everything's not enough. I know it never is. Enough is the color of you, me, and the rest of it. Let's cut your hair plus drink each day a little less and recommit to slipping further. As it happens, I'm not doing anything but this. Thank you so much. Beautiful.
Beautiful, Charles. Beautiful. That was <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Uh, thank you. It was a, a lovely way to close. Mm. And um, thank you again, Leonardo and Eleanor, and to all of you who tuned in. We had such a um, lively chat today, and it was a, such a lively conversation. So I'm really appreciative of all of you. And you can join us tomorrow at 1 p.m. for a conversation between Robert Longo and Jason Rosenfeld, and we'll conclude with a poetry reading from I.S. Jones. Oh, actually, I think our our event tomorrow is at 2 p.m. My apologies. You can join us tomorrow for, at 2 p.m. Um, and now you should be able uh, to turn on your microphone and say, uh, excuse me, sorry, and say uh, thank you. <laughs> My apologies. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you. 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 Thank you.